Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here again with the CETO After Show, where we're going to go over what did and didn't happen in St. Augustine on the beaches. I got Ryan Rickert with me in this episode. Ryan, how cool was that? I mean, it's pretty impressive, man. The, the thing that impressed me the most is again, you just don't have time on the water over here. But yet, hearing of how this works over here and hearing that you can catch them on the beaches in the pogey schools. And we did have to make some adjustments today to make that work and really hook them because we saw them and we couldn't get them to eat until we really figured the pattern out. So it's really cool to be a part of that. It, you're 100% right. We, we literally <laughs> had the conversation on the boat. We we're like, oh, it's tarping all over the beaches. They're crawling everywhere. The pogues are everywhere. We'll just show up and catch them. Right. And then we was like, what in the world? We're not catching them. That's right. what, so then we had to flip a switch and go, okay, what are we doing wrong? You know, what it. do we see? And what, what it, what's going to help us not suck? Because yeah. to start with, we were sucking. <laughs> so, so yeah, so we had to put our minds together and uh, we had to, like I you know, mentioned, we had to unflip the redfish switch and go, okay, dokie, let's see here. We got dirty water, we got clean water, we got a bunch of bait, we got a ton of action. None of it's working. Right. What are we missing? Is it little? Is it big? I'll be darned if it wasn't a little. It, it was. really, and, really and truly. It was. You know, sometimes, in no matter what you're doing, when you're trying to figure things out, it's just that little, single little thing that will make a difference. And today, that's what it was. We got out of where the actual pogey school was concentrated, and there was tarpon feeding in there. We saw them yeah. blowing them up. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, our mindset was there's so many baits in there, it's like a needle in a haystack of ours getting hit. But if you got right on the outside of that school, that water cleaned up just a little bit. I think those fish, you even said it today, I think those fish were running in their feed and running back out. But then yeah. when they came out, they're like, wait a minute, that's an easy bait, easy target. Bam, there's where our hit started happening. I 100% agree. I, 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 think, I think you nailed it exactly. I think they were running in there, there was so much chaos, and so much dirty water, and just chopped in half pogies, and the, I mean, just oil everywhere. The water was an absolute mess and yeah. full of chaos. And I think, like you say, once they got out on the outside and they started realizing, hey, it's pretty nice out here. I mean, it's what it seemed like. It's what it seemed like. Whether sure. that's what it was, if it was that simple in a tarpon's mind, I don't know. But that is the trend that we picked up on. And every time we caught, we kept catching ourselves, gosh, it's crazy. I mean, there's bait showering everywhere. They're striking, they're bullying, they're smashing. We just got it right in the middle. Every time we kept catching ourselves getting there, we kept catching ourselves going, what the world? I know. And then we'd slip out. <laughs> Yeah. And boom, if that trend didn't stick again. Absolutely. It was definitely exactly where we needed to be to catch the fish that we caught. And we jumped quite a few today. And really, the, there was a lot of boats on the water out there. We didn't really see many people jumping them. Um, but so many of those people were fishing a little differently than us. And they were fishing more in the pogey schools, which maybe that's a normal thing. And maybe we just had to think outside the box to make it work right now because maybe yeah. they've had more pressure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it worked for us. It did, yeah, it did. And I know, uh, you know, a lot of the times in the shows, we, we try to stick to uh, artificials a lot of times. And we had conversations about artificials. We talked about going and trying to find some big plugs. And then, um, and we actually did, I actually did purchase some uh, suspending lures. And we did pitch that around a little bit um, early on. Uh, but once we, we started realizing, you know what, here's the deal. Sometimes it's just easier to join them. You know, there's so much bait here, and you can't help but to go match a hatch, match a hat, match a hat. That's if it. they're used to seeing billions of pogies, then why not show them a pogey? No doubt. You know, and I've been in your neck of the woods before, I think we shared this story, where I was down there and they were on fry bait like the size of your pinky. That is all they would eat. They were just running through it like beluga whales or something, yeah. and just opening their mouth and just eating all the fry bait, but that's all they would eat. Nothing right. else you threw in front of them. So I've learned that thing with the tarpon, with the matching of the hatch. Uh, it, it exists. It's a big thing for them. So that, that, was, that was the key for us, was just keeping it simple, reminding ourselves why we were there, yeah. which was to have fun, catch some fish, put them in the air, see what happens, not stress out about it, not make it a big deal, yeah. blend in with the locals, yeah. land in water, and just have a good time. That we did, man. And I, I super appreciate you even asking me to come over and do this with you again. We have, we've had a good time together. We fished against each other in tournament stuff before. We fished around each other in different bodies of water. I appreciate you asking me to be a part of this. It was a great time for me. Yeah, no doubt. I appreciate you coming and, and spending time with me. And I tell you, there was, it was a perfect blend for us too. You know, as we sat there on the on the on the uh, boat and just watched 
everything happening. Yeah. You know, it was like we were taking, you, you were taking a piece and putting it in the puzzle. And the next thing you know, I was taking a piece and putting it in the puzzle. No doubt. And it was just like that for about two or three hours. And then it was like, wait a minute. Ryan, you see this? This is a trend. We done, <laughs> yeah. we done, we done messed around and found a trend. That's it. And it's an easy one, but it's a trend. By God, let's go with it. You know, yeah. and, and and that was the neatest thing, man. To just uh, to not not to not have a charter on the boat. You know what I mean? To not have a, to not have a uh, you know a tournament pressure. You know, yeah. and you, you got all this invested, and you're over here, and you got to win, you got to place, blah, blah blah. It was nice to have none of that on the table. I agree, man. And all we had to do was just put a few big silver kings in the air, and we uh, did that. And we, we did, did somewhere around a dozen. Yeah, yeah we did. Somewhere we, around a dozen. I didn't have the uh, success ratio you had in landing them, but yeah, we put a bunch in the air. Yeah. It, 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 and I want to bring up, you know, we, we noticed too, and, and this is just a fun fact for you, and I don't know if it was normal or not uh, for, the, for the show, but when we were fishing in the first chunk of the morning, which was the flood tide, the fish would come in and act like they were, they were on the beach and they were doing their thing, but then we'd hook them up and they wanted to go deep. Every one of them wanted to run deep. Yeah, you're right. One fish had us in 35 foot of water. That's right. And my elbow still hurts over that 35 foot of water trying to get his attitude changed. Yeah. But as soon as that tide went slack and then started going out, they started staying in the shallow water. And the other thing I thought that was super cool just because we were there filming a show. So the acrobatics that yeah. came along with the outgoing so tide. So phenomenal, phenomenal leaps and i mean they were jumping out of the water sometimes you said at one point i was standing up in your tower yeah and you're like man those things are almost high level with you i'm like yes they really were it was impressive <laughs> so uh, to, to see how they were early on and to see the change of their attitudes over just a tide change yeah really it neat. was it was cool to watch i mean it, it's been years upon years since i've been around that many tarpon at once with them eating mm -hmm. feeding that way to where you just, you're literally sitting there for one minute, you know, just watching the water and thinking, ah, I'm about ready for a bite, and it happens. Yeah. So it was really neat to just sit back and never know when you're fixing to get slammed. Right. And you know, we would, we got, we had some sharks messing with us, and it was real funny too because we're, we're sitting there catching the sharks, and it was like, all right, all right, all right, nervous. I'm my fishing, nervous. my bait's nervous, and all of a sudden, <laughs> no, nah, that's not him because you know. <laughs> You know what that tarpon's like yes, when he hits you do. it. Yes, well, your anticipation factor is so high, and then you got that shark bite, and you're like, oh, man, this is just not the one. That's and then, oh, wait, wait, it might be. Yeah, no, you don't want it to be. No, yeah. that, that was wishful thinking. Yeah, because that tarpon, man, when he comes out of there, he is like 13 barrels of monkeys when he finally hits that yeah. and realizes he messed up. Yeah, for sure. And it is, a, it is a, a, a sound that comes from that reel that not many fish make. Oh yeah, I mean, no doubt. Probably the tarpon, the wahoo, kingfish. I think that's about the. Everything else is just second best. Yes, exactly there. right. They're, they're just they're not for there. that kind of bite. Yes, they're just not there. The drags do not act like they're about to come out of the seams of the reel whenever they take yeah, off. It's I so agree. cool to be part of, man. And uh, you know, the, we we spent some time at the conch house uh, and uh, and seeing some scenes and things. You know, it, it's a it's a cool little town. St. Augustine is just one of those towns. You know that can offer that fishery on the beach like that and then you know all the history that's in the town is it's a really cool place to just go and and, and hang out with a friend or family or something like that yeah. it's a neat neat spot yeah, so. it was really cool to be a part for yeah. sure well man i appreciate you like i said we normally have a ton of tactics and tips and uh, a ton of uh input that we we like to do on the show uh revolving the lures that we used whether they worked or didn't work and why we didn't think why they thought we thought they didn't work and stuff to that nature for our, our technical aspect of things. But as I said, you know, me and Ryan really simply wanted to just go fishing and cut the fool and have fun and take all the load off of us and just catch some tarpon with some pogies. And that's exactly what we did. So uh, once again, guys, I appreciate you uh, tuning in to the uh, CTO After Show in uh, St. Augustine with me and myself and Ryan Rickard. We will see you down the road for the next show. Mm -hmm.